if, if someone came to me and said, what resources are there out there to become a lawyer healer? I would first tell them I had good news for them, that there were many resources, that there are, uh, any anytime you look, there's a new conference on therapeutic jurisprudence. There's a new book on therapeutic jurisprudence. There are many, many books coming out on collaborative law. There used to just be one, and now there's at least a dozen that I can just give you the titles of. There are many books coming out on restorative justice if you want to take healing into the criminal law or into the juvenile law. There are, is a movement now toward taking the diversion court concept where you divert people out of the system for treatment into the mental illness courts. There's a very high functioning court in Brooklyn where a judge is getting people diverted from the traditional mental illness court into treatment. So, in, in every one of these courts, problem solving courts, and every one of these movements is peopled by lawyers. Every drug diversion court needs lawyers. They need defense lawyers and they need prosecutors because the prosecutors in the drug diversion courts don't actually put people in the penitentiary, but they have to be there to enforce consequences if the people don't comply with the rehabilitation program. So, there are are, the opportunities now are legion for people to find a niche for them and the therapeutic jurisprudence websites, uh, many of the websites, the International Alliance of Ballistic Lawyers websites, there are many, many books and many resources out there. And the other thing is there are many books on lawyer healing out there because really to be the optimal lawyer healer you have to have healed yourself first. And of course that's a process, not an event, as my story demonstrates, because I just, when I thought I had it together, it turned out there was a whole other layer of healing that I needed. And, but, so there are the most resources there have ever been on external resources, external processes, external models and mechanisms to be a lawyer healer and there are the most resources there have ever been for lawyers to heal themselves. There's two different areas of lawyers that, that, that need help. There, there is the lawyer who has some impairment and the two most common impairments of lawyers are substance abuse and depression. And what I want to say to those lawyers is get help. Every state now has a confidential lawyer's assistance program and they, every state has resources to be a conduit for rehabilitation for that lawyer who has an impairment. And the other thing I'd want to say to the impaired lawyer is that you're not alone. 15 to 20 percent of your colleagues have some kind of impairment. And so it's becoming rapidly destigmatized to have an impairment and be a lawyer. So this is also a, a, a fortunate time to, to because even the disciplinary authorities in the bar are much more understanding of impairments now. So the first person I would speak to is the impaired lawyer. The far greater number of hurting lawyers are lawyers who don't have a diagnosable impairment, but they are in a funk. There are several studies that show that uh, the majority of lawyers are not happy in their profession and would not advise their children to become lawyers. To that person, I would say that you have several options. The first option is to see if you can reinvent yourself as a lawyer in a way that is pleasing to you and in a way that resonates with who you are. That process usually involves finding a coach, getting someone, a mentor, a therapist, or a coach who will help you identify your core values, identify who you really are on the inside, and see if you can craft a model for practicing law that is congruent with your core values. If that can't be done, there are many people that can coach an exit plan from the practice of law, where often you can replicate 
that you are not really replicate, but you can transfer skills that you've already developed into some other career and find your passion and get paid for doing what you love. So either reinvent yourself within the practice of law or get out and reinvent yourself somewhere else. But it's all possible. And I know hundreds of people that have done that successfully. I have often been asked if I think this movement of comprehensive law, lawyer, healer, therapeutic jurisprudence is mainstream. And the answer is no, but the answer is simply no, not yet. Because uh, the, there is the great quote from La Miserable, there is nothing so powerful as an idea whose time has come. And I believe that there is such momentum behind the movement now that it will become mainstream. I predict that in 20 years, people will look back in amazement and say, you mean people actually went to court and tried child custody cases? I actually believe that that'll be such an anomaly in 20 years that it'll be hard for people to believe that we actually did that. And so mainstream at this time, no, but is, is it emerging as mainstream in some practice areas? I'd say yes, it already is. Let me talk, talk to you about my partnership. Shortly after I survived my suicidal ideations in late December and early January of 1977 and late December of 1976, I ran across a pamphlet and the pamphlet suggested declaring a partnership with God every day. And it was not a God in a religious sense. It was not a Baptist God or a Catholic God. It was just a power greater than yourself. And it suggested making that power your senior partner. And that that partner would be in charge of the results, the long-term planning, the basically the big scheme of your life. And you would be the junior partner and you would just be in charge of the day-to-day -day legwork and just the, do the next right thing as much as you could each day and let the senior partner take charge of the results. I started declaring that partnership right then and I have literally declared it every day for the last 32 years and declared it this morning and frequently talked to people about that. And certainly the senior partner of my law practice is my higher power. And the one precondition I had with Steve Kiva when he wrote the profile of me with the American Bar Journal is that I'd be allowed to talk about my senior partner and that he would put that in the story. And I didn't care if his editor cut everything else out of the story that I thought was cool. If they didn't think it was cool, they could edit it. But I said, this is the core of who I am. The reason that I am successful and I am a proper subject for your interview is that God, my senior partner, has brought me to the place where I am. And if I died today, I would feel like that I'd had a very rich and satisfying legal career.